Thank you, Dr. Emmons, for the thorough and detailed presentation you have given. As I heard you speaking this morning, uh, I, I caught my attention that we are living in one of the most critical moments in history. Many of the issues concerning climate change has divided societies and political movements globally. I would argue that the global crisis of our time might be a mirror, mirroring of the inner turmoil of the human condition, deteriorated by greed, war, violence, and an ever-increasing and self-interest of the powerful and their destructive power. I wonder if the deterioration of the human race relationally and morally has to do with the ways humans have treated the planet and its resources. So based on your presentation, it is critical to ask ourselves to pertinent questions to care for and express gratitude for the planet as our home and beautiful creation, God's creation given to us to bring forth life for fruitfulness. Now, why should we care or be grateful for the decay we see in the environment? Another question I have for myself is how does your presentation still in me the intentionality to express gratitude for what our common home provides to me? One thing I learned from the pandemic of two years is to pay close attention to my back here in my house. I live in Colorado, and as you may know, the ground conditions for planting are unique. Rugged uh, condition, uh, low temperatures and high temperatures make it almost impossible to grow anything edible. So having a garden never worked for me. However, I studied and applied basic gardening concepts for the past two years while in quarantine. As a result, I appreciate, it, appreciate and look forward to gardening now. I planted and harvested vegetables starting early spring through mid-fall. I, I enjoy the generosity of a well-treated soil, adequate irrigation, and seeds. It was a lot of work, but it did not matter every time I harvested. I took many things for granted, I said to myself. Now I realize how much I lacked intentional gratitude for what people do to plant, harvest, and stock the products in the local markets. The created order, the beautiful display of God's splendor and glory, the material world that is now decaying because of our lack of understanding ought to move us to recognize our responsibility to what we're doing with the extension of the beauty and the glory of God in the created order. Pope Francis in the Laudato Si invites us to foster a new dialogue and universal solidarity. Gratitude is the first stepping stone toward a constructive conversation among people. We need to own the damage caused to our common home. While climate change continues to increase, the human race moves toward the crucible of facing unprecedented changes in our local weather systems as ever before. The consequences of our choices and immoral faculties that foment environmental uh, degradation. There is this intrinsic power in the word and practice of gratitude, especially related, related to our humanity and its relationship to our common home. I was oblivious to my own lack of awareness of how many things I take for granted without the intention of being thankful for. I learned to give grace before every meal as a good Christian, but somehow, Dr. Emmons, what you presented opened my eyes to a wider reality. It knitted together what I experienced in gardening and I, what I learned from your presentation. Your presentation. Now, I have a better language to start in conversations with others about our common disregard and unawareness of the problems within each of us. These problems lead us to neglect and minimize the global crisis. First, I would like to start backwards in my response to your paper and reflect on the words of uh, Lisa Graham McMinn. She asked several questions that are to be answered by those who will take this seriously. And I quote, 
that gratitude is a higher way to pay attention to looking for God, to looking for God manifest um, in the in the waters, in the setting of the moon, in the eyes of the owls, and in other, in each other. End of quote. Second, this is a calling of serious consideration to God's creative hand in all there is in front of us. Instead of moving for uh, in understanding who we are as human beings, as male and females, in the interplay of our relationships with one another, we have regressed. We have treated the other as objects, as something for one's self-interest, something that one wants to exploit. The basics of human selfishness materializes in the economies of consumption and greed. And this is what is destroying us. If we relate destructively with other human beings, what could we expect in one's relationship with nature? Third, the sense of entitlement, the lie that entices us to believe that we deserve everything for our selfish desire must be addressed. So in the words of Lisa Graham McMinn, we ought to envision our, our world redeemed and characterized by shalom. Gratitude must be the foundation for the mutual and vulnerable exchange of giving and receiving. God's shalom will be tangibly seen in the flourishing of creation and its inhabitants. Divine justice prevails and invites us to participate in healing and brings us to our senses to respond to the beauty and the redemption of the created order. Interestingly, we are having a conference on the science of gratitude and how crucial it is for us today to confess and realize that we are endangering the next generations and ourselves by our choices. If we prefer the opposite, the selfish entitlement and greed, these will ensure humanity's undoing. When we think that we deserve to be on this planet only to exploit and rape its natural resources, we go against the divine intention of stewardship and caring for the earth and its resources. The human race lives in denial, pretending that we can do whatever we want with the natural resources without taking any responsibility. With destructive power, we only dispose of our common home in the name of progress and prosperity. We must realize that we're not well equipped to recognize the problem of climate change. So far in our attempts, we try to impose even in doing something good, we oppress the other by our nagging what we need to talk about in climate change conversations. So far, it has not been effective. This is a heart's problem. Our consciousness need an awakening to the realization that the expression of our inner turmoil as human beings, male and female, may be reflected in nature. Seeing nat nature's chaos and destructive forces sure reminds us that we are inevitably interconnected. And this should stir us into a, an awareness and that, that will help us change our attitude toward gratefulness. It should bring us to us uh, our common sense in us of being vulnerable to beauty, vulnerable to the resources that refreshes our soul, nurture our bodies, and how we can give back in reciprocity. Therefore, the appeal for emotional and intrinsic motivators will help us perhaps to take care and regain consciousness by admitting our lack of understanding, a lack of emotional response to what we are doing to ourselves. In the words of Pope Francis mentioned, in the vision of Francis of Assisi, highlights that love and respect for life should invite us to take responsibility and in our devotion and worship to God, to give space in our lives to the act of gratitude in a reciprocal way. A grateful heart shows love and respect for what is given. It is an Eucharistic moment rooted in the core act of human redemption. You know, the gospels show gratitude for the fruit of the earth symbolized in the bread and the wine. To express thank you as an expression of a of a grateful heart to God is the ongoing invitation live out in the Lord's Supper and given to us, God's people, as an act of remembering. 
Dr. Emmons helped us to understand the healing power of reciprocity, which will nurture our spirituality and will lead us to a flourishing life crafted in the words of gratitude, benevolence, and respect for the beauty and the creative hand of God. The sense of entitlement in the heart of human beings like myself inhabits in generations, cultures, religions, because these only lead us to the destruction and rape of nature. So the underlying definition of gratitude is to invite us to regain, to redeem our way of being grounded and embedded in seeing life as a gift. Perhaps such a disposition of a heart will lead us to a conversation with people that not necessarily hold faith in God, but invite us to mutuality. It creates bridges of opportunities for conversations about caring for the planet, Mother Earth. Remember, and I want to go back to my illustration of the garden. It was a reciprocal moment for me that allowed me to realize how much I like gratitude toward the good of the earth given to me. So listening to Dr. Emms again helped me connect how something as simple as my vegetable garden giving forth its bounty as I care for the soil, producing me an unexpected sense of gratitude. It changed me. It motivated me to have conversations with others about giving and receiving in the liturgy of gardening. This last point leads me to think about the innate reciprocity in the practice of people of different cultures around the world. This is a substantive indicator of human interconnectedness through gratitude. The promise of the science of gratitude, as shared in your presentation here in the GTN, the Gratitude to Nature Scale, invites us to become morally concerned with uh, with, with the needs of the world, the, the earth, and intrinsically motivated to act responsibly toward creation and its environment. And to conclude, I want you to, for a minute, my friends, to picture yourself in front of a beautiful Thanksgiving table. And you are gathered there for your family. You can smell the aroma of freshly baked apple pie, my favorite, coming in front of you. And the scent of the spices of a cooked turkey. Yet deep in your heart, there's an increasing desire to give thanks and get on the food. So let's take, let's take this act of gratitude deep in our hearts today to naturally instill in us a sense of love, care, and respect for our common home. Acts that can be translated into thankfulness for the produce of the earth, for clean water, for the hands of those who farm the fields, and those who harvest so that we can eat and nourish our, our bodies. May the act of gratitude from our hearts deliver us from our greed, from our sense of entitlement that only destroy the human soul into the end, an ending cycle of selfishness, self-interest, and self-sufficiency. Let gratitude be a virtue to redeem us from the, from the entitled, entitlement lie that we have embraced as a society, as cultures around the globe. May we be thankful in response to the benefits that we receive from nature, and appropriate the invitation to value our role in this moment in history, that we are trustees and caretakers of our common home, in the words of Pope Francis. Failure to preserve and protect the gifts that none of us have worked for, but have been given to us as gifts, may be a practice we can take away from this presentation and this conference, to call ourselves stewards, built and embedded in the spirit of gratefulness. Let us be aware that reciprocity attunes our hearts and respond to the countless ways in which our planet supports, sustains, and nourishes and provides to everyone, to all of us. The ultimate goal is that we can flourish along with our common home for the glory of God. Gratitude to nature invites us to embrace perhaps a sociology of emotions that will move us to energize our lives together to not only care for what's important to one person or to one society or to one government, but to help us to acknowledge and to take ownership that we are interconnected with one another and with, one, and with our common home. Our common sustainability for generations, for our families, for our children and grandchildren shall invite us to collect to recollect how critical and important it is to acknowledge in the prayer of Francis of Assisi 
in the following and join me in this prayer. Praise be you, my Lord, through brother, wind and air and fair, stormy, all weather smooths by which you cherish all that you have made. Praise be you, my Lord, through our sister Mother Earth, who sustain us and govern us, producing varied fruits with colored flowers and herbs. Praised be you, my Lord, through sister water, so useful, so humble, so precious, so pure. So in addition, let me finish with this. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful home that you remind us again, that is for us to care, respect, cherish, and love, and to be grateful for. Amen. <laughs>